Battle for Avdiivka. Stage 1, October 10th to 11th, 2023. Apparently, the main goal of the first stage of the operation was to expand the semi-coverage of the fortified area by taking under fire control the roads leading to the already semi-encircled Avdiivka. On the northern flank, from Novobakhmutovka, an apparently diversionary attack was carried out on Karamik and Novokolinovo, which was also accompanied by artillery and airstrikes. The main push from Krasnogorovka to Berdikai allowed RF to jump over abandoned railway lines leading to Avdivka and catch on to the northeastern outskirts of Berdikai. Not so many forces were involved in this breakthrough. Only five groups crossed the piece of iron which managed to create a center of concern on the northern flank of the Avdivsky fortified area and forced the AFU to disperse reserves with harassing fire. From the southwest, attacks were directed from Vadianai and Apani to Severny. In the southeast from Spartak to the southern fortified area at the DKD junction and the stopping point at 450 kilometers of the Yasinovatsky branch of the Donetsk Railway. The initial push in the fog of war, was successful only in the north, which, in general, is not so surprising. The Avdivsky fortified area, in the best traditions of the First World War, is densely filled with concrete and equipped with the latest fortification, including an impressive belt of minefields and tanks embedded in concrete, as well as buried communication passages and video surveillance cameras. By the end of the first day of the operation, the AFU was able to be knocked off from the ash dump of the Avdivsky Coke and Chemical Plant, a KHC, to the northwest of the city. However, it was not possible to gain a foothold there, but one should not underestimate the impossibility of the Ukrainian armed forces to place eyes there. Despite the abundance of various UAVs, classical spotters and observers at dominant heights also play a role not to mention the possibility of deploying light anti-tank weapons 8 GMs. Stage 2, October 12-15, 2023 By October 11, despite the ongoing fighting on the outskirts of Berdikai, the Russian armed forces managed to expand the base of the northern wedge, starting battles for Petrovsko. Thanks to this initiative, it was possible to at least partially reduce the threat of cutting off the advancing northern group. Judging by the AFU's further actions, this had a certain effect. However, the groups northeast of Berdikai had to be pulled back behind the railroad tracks after a couple of days. Having secured themselves along the railroad line, Russian troops began to inflict active fire on the Ukrainian formations rushing in pursuit. At the same time, the cleanup of the waste heap, ash dump, south of Krasnogorovka continued. Partially, Russian troops managed to gain a foothold in the northeastern part of the waste heap, but it was not possible to advance further due to Ukrainian artillery fire. Near Spartak, Russian troops approached the outskirts of the Tsarskaya Okota Recreation Center, which was turned into a powerful fortified area that prevented them from approaching the private sector in the south of Avdivka. Stage 3, October 16 19, 2023. During the battles of October 16th to 19th, the Ukrainian formations, having recovered from the initial shock and transferring reinforcements to the fortified area, were able to finally push the Russian armed forces back not only from Berdikai, but also from Petrovsky. An additional reinforcement force of the armed forces of Ukraine, apparently, is being formed in Novokolinovo. Reserves are apparently being transferred there for an attack towards Krasnogorovka and the surrounding area. Fighting around the ash dump continues. The height itself remains a draw. Either side can gain a foothold on the waste heap. At the same time, to the west of Evdivka there are fierce battles on the vadianoi severnotonin line. Due to the dense mining of the area, either Russian troops can approach Ukrainian positions nor the Ukrainian armed forces are able to launch a successful counterattack. The advance from Spartak is relatively successful. The front line along the railway is leveled. The assault groups of the Ukrainian armed forces deployed through the Tsar's hunt are scattered. A few movements were noticed in Pervomeski and Netilovo. Apparently, 
The command of the armed forces of Ukraine attempted to seize the initiative by striking the flank of the now southern advancing group of the Russian armed forces. But the RF armed forces are solving the main task of this stage, the destruction of the transferred reserves including those that were hastily withdrawn from the Kharkov region and the Zaporizhzhia direction. Fourth Stage, October 20-21, 2023 By the end of October 21, one can see how the Russian group of troops manages to complete the task of expanding the buffer zone around Krasnogorovka after the destruction of the assault groups and reinforcements of the Ukrainian armed forces transferred to this area. On the northern flank, the Russian armed forces are building a defense north of the ash dump along the railway and thwarting counterattacks of the Ukrainian armed forces from Berdikai and Petrovsky, Stepovo, with artillery. The waste heap comes under the full control of Russian troops. The railway track becomes the demarcation line. The fighting is shifting to the eastern outskirts of Petrovskoy. In the southern section the situation is similar. It was not possible to break through the AFU's defenses in the direction of Severny and Toninki. There are oncoming battles for landings. Artillery is active on both sides, as are UAVs, including FPVs equipped with drop systems. To date, the fighting continues. Advievka fortified area is one of the oldest and prepared from the very beginning of the war in Dabes. Over the course of almost ten years, a powerful network of communications and fortified areas was built on this site, turning Avdivka and the industrial zone into a fortress worse than the Bakhmut Fort. And given the configuration of the front, which allows Ukrainian formations to send units into the city, the number of counterattacks will only increase. To minimize losses, the advance of the RF armed forces is proceeding measuredly, without sudden jerks. However, since the Ukrainian armed forces still have enough resources to carry out strikes on Donetsk, this could provoke an increase in the onslaught of the Russian army. Sooner or later, constant pressure in different areas will produce results in one of them. Additional forces will be deployed there. Well, the northern breakthrough and a significant improvement in the positions of Russian troops around the fortified area form a good basis for continuing offensive operations.